Thank you very much for staying late to accompany me, otherwise I'll be talking to myself. Uh, kind of late, so I'm gonna run a little bit on time. I'm Dr. Wang, and thank you, the moderator, for the introduction. My switch topic to the clinical picture here, so I'll be more relaxed and less, strength, less tension. Now, my topic is the function outcome of unique osteoporosis in Asian patients with six years follow-up. What I mentioned this morning, uni knee or called partial knee replacement is still a debatable and controversial surgery. Now, uni knee osteoporosis remain very controversial despite of increasing uh, number of favorable results in the past 10 to 15 years. Now, uni knee, to our opinion, some, opinion, some of the orthopedic surgeon is the most suitable option for the media compartment osteoarthritis or arthropathy of the knee joint. With in conjunction with the, the recent development of minimal invasive quadriceps sparing technique, that surgery permits a very fast recovery and early discharge and better function. Now, uni knee, according to some studies, has shown a good excellent result uh, with survival rate between 85 to 98% in 10 to 21 years. Why do any study for? Now, uni knee osteoplasty may sound like a, the best suit that better, suit better for the activity of daily living in Asian lifestyle. However, very little study addressed the function outcome of in any other process so far. The purpose of this study is to evaluate the functional outcome of in any other process for media compartment arthropathy of the knee joint in Asia patient with uh, medium term follow up. Now the inclusion criteria there are three categories of criteria being applied to the unique osteoporosis. The first one is clinical criteria. Clinical criteria means based upon a clinical examination that demonstrates the pain and tendon is localized to the medial joint line and knee flexion uh, more than 90 degrees and fixed knee flexion deformity less than 10 degrees. Now, second category of the criteria is the radiographic criteria include that the uh, isolated medial compartment osteoarthritis with complete lost cartilage and osteonecrosis, the medial femoral condyle, and virus deformity of the knee of less than 15 degree, and very, very insignificant degenerative change of the other compartment means the lateral and the patellar femoral compartment. The third criteria is the intraoperative. <coughs> that means the patient had a virus deformity that must be collectable under anesthesia and the intraoperative, make sure you have an intact anterior cruciate ligament and also the full thickness cart wear, cartilage well on the anterior uh, media of the media tibia plateau. Just one word of the clinical practice. Sometimes it's very difficult to assess the severity, the severity of cartilage damage by clinical and radiographic examination. For example, this x-ray on this patient show a relatively mild osteoarthritis change with uh, some preservation of the joint spaces. However, arthroscopic finding show a total loss of grade, uh, grade four osteoarthritis change the complete loss of articular cartilage, that indicating the necessity of surgical intervention. Therefore, sometimes if you are clinically in doubt, arthroscopic <coughs> examination may be one of the eight crew you can use. Now, the exclusion criteria include the following picture here. First of all, the body mass been mentioned many times today, greater than 30, and prior high tibia osteotomy of the knee joint, and also if you find a patient with a full thickness of patellar cartilage loss and degenerative change involving other compartment, lateral compartment, as well as the patellar femoral compartment. And lastly, is a severe angular deformity and flexion contraction more than 15 degrees. Now, this study uh, consists of uh, 58 patients with 62 knees with a four knee with bilateral surgery, an average age is about 66, from ranging from 43 to 81. As I mentioned from the prior uh, presentation, majority of the patients are, four, are female, approximately 75%, and the male about 25%. Uh, and 85% uh, are due to osteoarthritis, and only 15% are due to osteonecrosis and body weight, BMI, etc. show here. 
Now, so uh, this uh, patient population consists of 50, 58 patients with 62 unit arthroplasty. When used only one type of prosthesis to keep the this study more run smoothly, and all components are cemented. And post-op rehabilitation, rehabilitation is very unique. That includes ambulation with weight bearing as tolerated right away as much patient can tolerate, and range of motion and uh, muscle strain exercises until patient can fully recover. And the, the average follow-up is series of 72 months, ranging from 16 to 30, 130 months. Now, just a few words the surgical tip what I do and what most people would recommend. A few uh, surgical tips include the minimal invasive media papatera approach with quadriceps spell and lateral displacement with the patera, but do not evert the patera. And most important, to avoid the instant uh, fracture of the vertical tibia cut and the minimal or non soft tissue release and make sure you obtain an adequate fraction <coughs> and uh, if extension gap and replication of tibia slope, and lastly, most important, the centering of the femoral component on the tibia component to reduce the age loading effect <coughs> after surgery and allow a two millimeter media laxity of the process during surgical implantations. Now, when evaluate a patient based on this, first with functional assessment, including pain, giving way, still climbing, squatting, kneeling, and jogging. In addition, when evaluate a patient using the Knee Society Knee and Function Score and the IKDC stand for International Knee Documentation Committee Score, and lastly is the radiographic examinations. Now, look at the result, it's a functional uh, result score. The, after surgery, the patient have a significant, statistical significant improvement in function score and IKDC score as well as a range of emotion in all categories you can show in this uh, slide here. Now the function outcome show and normal knee in approximately 51% and nearly normal knee or 37 with two category uh, put together is approximately 80 eight or 89 percent of patients showing excellent to normal to nearly normal knee. Abnormal knees show only about eight percent, only five out of 62 knees, and severe abnormal only two cases or 3.2 percent. Now on the maximum functional uh, capacity, including steel climbing in 96 percent, squatting 75, jogging 71, and kneeling in 77, and approximately 96% of the patients are very satisfied with the operation. Now, this is called good result. This lady, two years after knee surgery and right knee, right knee is, was pain-free and the patient was able to fully active for activity of daily living, including squatting, etc. Now, this is called a bad knee. This is a 57 years old female, complaint of constant pain in the knee, around the left knee despite the satisfactory range of motion from zero to 100 degree at one and a half year after knee surgery. Now the x-rays show a radio, radio resonance line associated with a age loading effect on this particular side of the knee and surgery is being recommended. Now on radiographic examination, now after surgery, it is a significant improvement in the femoral TB alignment and the tibia slope as I mentioned before. In addition, radial lucency only noted in 3% of cases and cement protrusion in 10%, but none of them is, is uh, symptomatic. Now, more important thing is see the component was centered in 79% and slightly the media place approximately 90%, which are asymptomatic. And one patient with a lateral sided position or the main component in my position that warrants surgical intervention in the later day. Now, the degenerative change was 0% before and 3.2% after on the lateral compartment. And in the patellofemoral compartment, what the most concerned are was 29% before surgery and 34 after surgery. Now, the most important interesting question is how the patellofemoral arthritis affect the outcome of this particular type of surgery. Now, look at this picture here. This is a patellofemoral component. Before surgery, the 29% show very mild and very early osteoarthritis, which are difficult to even perceive through x-ray examination. 
and after surgery is only showing 34 percent. Now, more importantly, the functional outcomes show no significant differences between the knee, either with or without a mild patella femoral arthritis that was identified intraoperatively. Now, look at functional participation in the patient. You can calculate functional score, kneeling, squatting, and sit on to stand. Now, to compare patient with uh, patella femoral osteoarthritis, these four categories show significant improvement after surgery, including functional score, kneeling, squatting, sitting, stand, etc. However, when you compare these two groups, one is a patient with uh, patella femoral arthritis, the other one is a patient without patella femoral arthritis, the difference in all different parameters show no difference between two uh, categories. Now, complication. The unique osteoporosis is supposed to be less complication than traditional total knee osteoporosis. Most common thing is a DVT and infection. In this particular series, one knee has a non-specific and undetermined source of pain around the knee post operatory and uh, additional surgery deemed to be necessary. And two knee underwent, uh, two knee show a post uh, symptomatic uh, due to component mal position and one knee underwent revision total knee osteoporosis and the other revision is currently pending. Now, in the osteoporosis is a reborn knee process since early 1972 when I was doing my fellowship. And that recently, because of the reintroduction and re probably reduced because of the change in design and the material selection. Now, nearly normal biphasic gait pattern and similar, kin uh, similar kinematic profile of a normal knee were reported after unit knee osteoporosis, and the gait velocity and the muscle strength after unit knee are superior, so the report could be superior than after high tibia osteotomy. Now, unit knee osteoporosis improved range of motion, shortened rehabilitation, and immediate weight bearing than high tibia osteotomy. However, the advantage of high tibia osteotomy is your ability to uh, maintain a higher level of activity without potential wear of the osteoporosis component. Overall evaluation, the unique osteoporosis show slightly better result in survival between 96 to 98 percent at seven to eight year result. This according to the previous reported series. In our series, we have a patient functional participation including 98% of patients able to do squatting, 76% able to jog, jogging, and 77% uh, uh, patient can do kneeling. And the revision rate is only 4% at six years, and survival rate so far is 96% with a, with a very pleased with. Now, one of the concerns in unit knee osteoporosis is the progression of osteoarthritis change in the lateral and the patella femoral compartment and ultimately necessitated additional total knee surgery. Now, progression of osteoarthritis change reported in 18% in the lateral compartment and 14% uh, in the patella femoral compartment in 10-year follow-up according to previous report by Berger. And the cumulative revision rate for unit knee to uh, convert to total knee was approximately 22% in patients at, at which, uh, 60 years or younger. Now, uh, the result our series show that the uh, osteoarthritis change was 29% before, 34% after surgery for the patella femoral compartment, and 0% before, and 3.2% after surgery for lateral compartment. And the function outcome, this is more important, function outcome show no difference in knee, either with or without patella femoral arthritis. That was identified intraoperatively. Therefore, in our opinion, unit knee osteoporosis is not contraindicated knee with a mild patella femoral arthritis mentioned in previous report. Now, advantage of unit knee osteoporosis is less complication than total knee, such as infection, depends on both stiffness, etc. And the higher patient satisfaction was of, of reported after revision of a failed total unit knee osteoporosis to total knee versus after a failed revision from total knee to total knee. The disadvantage of unit knee could show the, the accumulated revision rate approximately 22% for patients with younger age than 60, and this was certainly higher than the total knee replacement. 
In our current series, there is no infection of DBT and revision rate only 4% at six years and the survival rate 96%. Conversion of unit knee prosthesis to total knee prosthesis was performed in only one case, even though the other case is pending. Now, patient selection is one of the very key factors to successful unit knee osteoporosis. The unit knee, I just want to repeat again, is a contraindicated in knee with greater than 10 degree of friction flexion contracture, virus deformity exceeding 15, 15 degree and is not correctable under anesthesia during surgery. And also patient with a post posterior media wear of a tibia plateau and a patient with BMI greater than 30 is our absolute contraindication. Now previously, selection implant is equally important. You, in the past, we used all poly or plastic tibia component without a clear design, which is highly associated with the failure and early, uh, uh, early failure day. Therefore, in our opinion, the surgical technique of unit osteoporosis is exacting and proficient. So in, in conclusion, in our opinion, based on this series, we feel the unit osteoporosis demonstrates an excellent function outcome and high patient satisfaction in Asia patient with six year follow up and the maximum functional participation, including kneeling, squatting, sitting on the floor, that most suit the requirement of Asia life, Asian lifestyle. In addition, the recent introduction of minimal invasive surgical technique allowed a much shorter hospital stay, generally between two to three days, and faster recovery and less effort in rehabilitation, <laughs> and the survival rate was 96% uh, during this follow-up. Therefore, we conclude that proper patient selection and precise surgical technique are the key to a successful unity osteoporosis, perhaps to other type of process surgery as well. Thank you very much for your attention. Uh, thank you, Dr. Wang, for a very, a very good presentation. Thank I've got a couple of questions uh, for you, really. Um, the first one was, uh, you know, you quite um, appropriately mentioned that any posterior wear obviously signifies ACL dysfunction and hence a failure, higher failure rate. So in your series, or have you come across, maybe not in this particular series of patients, where you would advocate doing an ACL reconstruction with a unicompartmental knee replacement? If I have patient the knee is so bad that require either new knee, uni knee process or total knee process. I probably would not contemplate to ACL reconstruction. I would go ahead to a knee replacement. Okay. Yeah. And the second question, just leading on from that, is uh, again in your series you described a few percentage of people who have progression of arthritis either in the patellofemoral compartment or the lateral compartment. Yeah. But because of your lifestyle of the Asian patients requiring high flexion, squatting, general day to day activities. Instead of converting a unicompartmental knee replacement with good fixed components, but progression of arthritis in other compartments, would you or have you considered advocating maybe partial patellofemoral replacement or maybe a lateral compartment uni replacement? So hence you're still maintaining the ligaments and maintaining the overall function rather than converting it to a total. Thank you. You can see the development of osteoarthritis change in the lateral compartment is very rare even less than, but, uh, less than four, two or three percent only. Therefore, there is no cases that require additional surgery because of the development of lateral compartment or osteoarthritis. In particular, for more component, if there's increasing severe wear, I certainly will recommend perhaps patella procedure replantation maybe in conjunction with unit knee could be, is it doable? Yeah. But I, I have not done the case that this kind of yet usually you talk about a severe wear for many years to come, and a patient eventually end up a re, a re conversion of one from one type of procedure to a total knee procedure. That would be most likely in our practice. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs>